Hey there, Michael here for 1CRM. In this section of the 1CRM demo, I'm going to explain the life cycle of a lead within the 1CRM system. We'll cover all the steps from creating a new lead to when they become a customer and show you how 1CRM tracks all your interactions with them along the way. To begin with, there's a client stage even before leads known as targets, uh, also known as prospects in some other systems. Uh, these are often names you've purchased on a list or receive regularly from an industry partner who feeds you leads. 1CRM can perform email campaigns for you with these targets, as well as with your leads and your contacts. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, we see here on the screen uh, a series of random targets that we don't really know anything much about. Once the target's contact information has been confirmed, though, and you know they have some interest in what you have to offer, you usually convert them to a lead, and the main sales force typically doesn't even get involved with them uh, until they become a lead. Okay, so for instance, we could go to our uh, our friend Fred here and convert the target, and we see it's about to become a new lead record, and just save him like this. Now we're back at Fred the target, but there is an, an associated lead, uh, which we can, I think, get to here. And we can proceed from there. Now we're in the leads module where we can see all the leads in the system. You get there from the sales and marketing menu and click on the leads module. Like every other module, you have some filters at the top. So for example, one of my favorites is click on only favorites and I can see just the leads that are marked with this asterisk here. Again, like all other modules down at the bottom here, you have a mass update panel. So for example, we could pick a number of records and then set them all to this smoking temperature, uh, indicating a really hot lead. This is probably a good time to point out that uh, you can change all of the drop-down lists in the system, and so you're not stuck with that if you don't think it's right for you. So now if I update there, we've set the uh, temperature on all of these leads. Now, we're not actually seeing a column that shows temperature, so this is a good time to learn about smart list tabs. And how we do that is to go here and click on plus to create a new smart list tab. And uh, let's call this one smoking leads. There we go. We'll set a filter on it and say we only want to see uh, the leads where their, let's go, T for temperature is smoking. Okay, and then we also want to see a column showing that perhaps for validation. So I could go down here and select a field and add the temperature column to the list view. And I might not want it right at the end. Uh, let's bring it way up here by status. Okay, and now we can save that smart list tab. And there we've got smoking leads. And here they all are showing their temperature. And I should mention that if you always want to deal with smoke and leads, you can make that your default tab on the far left. And you do that just like that, moving it to the top of your list of these layouts. And now you've got smoke and leads on the far left. Now let's uh, work with one lead in particular, okay? So I'm gonna click on this Browse All tab here, and let's work with our pal Fred here. So we'll click on Fred. We see we have buttons at the top here to duplicate uh, the lead, delete the lead, uh, print the lead, uh, convert the lead to a contact, which we'll look at later on, uh, and so on, okay? So let's uh, edit uh, Fred the lead. And just for fun, uh, we can set an image 
for Fred. A very familiar one, I would hope. And we see down below uh, the main panel, you see the related activities, history, and so on that we have with, uh, with Fred, which is nothing at the moment, so let's add some of those. Uh, we could schedule a meeting. So here we get meeting with Fred Flintstone, and we could set the uh, time for tomorrow at one o'clock and add that. We're just generating a little bit of activity uh, information for uh, the lead as we continue the demo. So let's schedule a call as well. And we can put that sometime next week and add that. Then let's uh, set a task. Um, just a sample task, and uh, we'll make it due at the end of the month. And there we go. Now we might attach a note, perhaps a proposal or something for our lead. So again, sample note, and we could uh, upload an attachment from the desktop and um, pick any old file that I have here, in this case a PDF, and save that off. So now we have a decent interaction history with Fred. Now, once we get to the certain point where we might want to prepare a quote for Fred, or we might want to document a very specific opportunity with Fred, we should convert him to a contact uh, and an account. You'll see that. Uh, when a pre-customer, you just have a simple lead record which has the lead's account name just as a simple field on that record. But once we convert to a contact, you notice it's preparing to create a separate account for the a company name that was provided on the lead, and we can save that off. But first, let's also create a related opportunity. So seeing as we have Fred here, the opportunity might be to uh, sell him a number of rock crushers. Why not? Sales stage is perhaps perception analysis, expected close date, perhaps end of October here. Halloween seems somehow suitable. And uh, 100,000 worth of rock crushers. We could also create an initial appointment here, but we have a fair bit of history with Fred already, so let's just save that off. Now we're back uh, looking at Fred the lead, as we see here, but if we look down here, we have a converted contact opportunity and account. So as ever, we can navigate to the account. We see that Fred is the primary contact. We can scroll down. We see all of that activity history uh, has uh, traveled along to the account. And we see Fred as the first of perhaps uh, many contacts at this account. So we could zip over to see Fred's record. Here's Fred the contact. And again, all of that history has moved forward onto him as well. Here's the opportunity, and so on. Uh, so now we're starting to make a decent headway into seeing the life cycle of a lead. Let's just focus on opportunities for a moment. We have this one here for, uh, for Fred at Slate Rock and Gravel Company. If we edit this, we see Three fields in particular, sales stage, probability, and forecast category. And these three are linked. You can define whatever sales stages you want, but they will be linked to uh, matching forecast category and probability figures uh, that you set. So if we go to value prop, for instance, here, it sets a certain forecast category and a certain probability, which you can override if you want to. Okay. So we can save that. Now, interestingly, these opportunities, of course, are there to provide uh, a sales pipeline view, which is an aggregate of all your opportunities. So if we go to the home dashboard, we can see that. 
And we were on value proposition for that particular opportunity. So we see it's this purple month, 17 opportunities worth 650,000. And an interesting thing that you can do is click through or drill down and see those 17 opportunities, one of which, if we scan down here, have I missed it already? No, there it is, Rock Crushers at Slate Rock and Gravel. So we see how circular and linked everything is here. We created uh, the lead and converted it uh, into a, an account and a contact because we were needing to document an opportunity. The other uh, trigger would have been if we had to create a, a quote. But all these things are so uh, linked to each other. And we see that really, ultimately, the account is the center of the CRM around which everything revolves. But in the beginning, it all stems from the lead. And from the lead, we proceed to the contact and account, this pair of uh, things that are closely linked, then to the opportunity, then to the quote, and all the other related information within the CRM. And that's what we call the life cycle of a lead.